Welcome to the Parent and Family Resource. This is a question and answer presentation with Aloisa, titled Self-Responsibility. This presentation is a discussion about self-responsibility, what self-responsibility is, and how to practically apply principles of divine truth and self-reflection questions in order to become a self-responsible individual. Recorded on the 21st of July, 2021, at 11.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello and welcome to the Parent and Family Resource. I'm Eloisa. This is a question and answer presentation from a question that a viewer sent in in the last couple of weeks on self-responsibility. So the question that was sent in is, I have a question about responsibility. From what I understand, parents are responsible for meeting their children's needs up to a certain point. For example, a parent should be available when a child needs assistance with something, but don't need to be available when the child is an adult because adults can be self-responsible. I don't have any children, but I find myself wondering how much I should be responsible for others as an adult. Is it treating a person like a child if I feel like I should be available when they need help? And what about the children with no parents? Ultimately, it seems the adults on the earth should take responsibility for them. My question is just basically, how do I assess my level of responsibility towards a person? Thank you for your question. I appreciate having questions because it makes me think about um, various ways that we can apply the principles of divine truth to your question specifically, but also, there's themes within the question and this one is about self-responsibility. So in this presentation I'll be talking about self-responsibility itself and via a bit of a discussion about self-responsibility and applying certain principles I think you will be able to come to answer your own question. And that's the point of this resource is to give you the tools and some suggestions and experiments that you can start to use in order that you can come to answer your own questions in your own lives. In saying that, I love receiving your questions and uh, please send more through if you so desire. So firstly, I want to give a definition of what I'm referring to as self-responsibility. Self-responsibility is the law-based requirement of self-awareness to seek truth, love and understanding of all principles of love and law and the loving ownership and expression of one's will, desire, passion, emotion, attitudes, intentions, thoughts and actions in harmony with God's principles and laws. A person's level of self-responsibility is measured by God, not as the perfect embodiment of humility, expression of love or desire for truth, but by the sincere desire to attain this state. So when I talk about understanding principles of love and law, that's from God's perspective. And also I think it's very interesting that God's not asking us to be perfect right away. God just wants us to have a sincere desire to become self-responsible. And when you begin to have a sincere desire to be self-responsible, then God can give you more responsibility. And once you're self-responsible, then um, put for your own life and your own personal circumstances, then you actually can assume role responsibility and have a role in the world. And God can give you these roles in the world and from a spiritual perspective. But it also goes in a physical way. Often role responsibility on earth is given to people who are not even self-responsible yet. And so a lot of problems happen in the world and businesses and governments and um, institutions in the world or even in families. Often as parents, we have a role and we are there to educate and be teachers to, to other small human souls who are coming into the world, yet we aren't even self-responsible yet and we, we are then put into a role that we're not even ready or prepared for. In saying that, children are a wonderful opportunity in order to become self-responsible and to teach children how to be self-responsible and to become aware of what self-responsibility means if you haven't had that opportunity yourself from your own parents and growing up in your own family or in the world. So self-responsibility is a law-based requirement and God 
has designed it that we are every single one of us as self-responsible. So if we're not, then we are out of harmony with law, which means we're out of harmony with love. There are areas of self-responsibility. So there's some main areas in our life to be self-responsible with. And there's our um, physical needs that to be self-responsible, emotionally self-responsible. Um, we can be sexually self-responsible, spiritually self-responsible. Those are sort of main four areas that are discussed in the teachings of divine truth. Um, and they sort of cover every everything and we need to be self-responsible in all areas of our life. So I'm taking the approach in this question of just talking about responsibility, self-responsibility in general. And from there, I feel you'll then be able to assess for yourself about when you to take responsibility and when not to take responsibility. In saying that, if you imagine a whole world where every single person is responsible for their own emotions for their own physical needs and requirements for their own you know, sexual needs and requirements and when I say that with themselves and just their soulmate rather than with everyone you know wanting things from others in the world and also spiritually self-responsible meaning that we take responsibility for our relationship with God and our of being in harmony with God's laws and for the way that we interact with um, other other people who are in spirit and for our spiritual growth and our spiritual development. If we were self-responsible in all of these areas and everybody was, there would be so many less problems in the world. So <laughs> there wouldn't be any blame because everyone would be actually taking responsibility so there'd be nothing to blame anyone for. <laughs> there would be a lot less pain and trauma because we would be acting in a self-responsible manner, which means that we wouldn't be having expectations and demands on other people. We would be taking emotional responsibility for the way we feel and the actions that we take and um, for actually feeling our feelings and would be feeling them. So then we'd have a lot less addictions in the world and we'd have a lot less addictions that cause harm and pain and suffering between other human, you know, other people and um, our children or our partners. And so self-responsibility is a very loving thing to do and it's a quality to develop. And it also helps us to become self-aware, which is part of the reason for a soul incarnating onto Earth and having the Earth life experience, is for us to become self-aware, to come to know our nature and personality, to come to understand our desires and our passions and our feelings and our thoughts and what it means to express ourselves in the world and have a relationship with God and even to discover that there is a God to also, our, if we were self-responsible, there would be a whole lot of environmental issues that wouldn't be happening on, on the planet and everyone would be getting behind the planet in order to actually heal the earth and to make some you know, environmental recovery projects and actually repair the damage that is being done inadvertently or overtly by yourself or others. The agriculture would, would, would do that in a self-responsible manner where it's actually based on love and truth and actually looking after the environment rather than just taking and taking and taking to meet our own addictive demands for meat or for various products that we eat or that we want. Many, many different things in the world would change if we were self-responsible. We've said that self-responsibility is the law-based requirement of self-awareness to seek love, truth and understanding of principles of love and law so that's all about finding out like what God's truth is and what love is and what God's laws are and the principles of God's laws, which are taught, discussed in this, in this parent and family resource. If you can understand principles of love and law, then you can apply those to any situation. That's the beauty of principles. It's also about the loving ownership and expression of one's will, desire, passions, emotions, attitudes, intentions, thoughts and actions and bringing those in harmony with God's love and law, with God's principles and law, like God's love too. That is all about us as individuals. So our will, as a reminder, is where we're at right now and what we, we want and what we have created right now. That's where our will is at. And our desire is our aspiration or desire for the future. And that can be in harmony or disharmony with love either one, so we can have unloving desires and desires that are out of harmony with love and out of harmony with truth from God's perspective, and we can have desires that are in harmony with love and in harmony with truth from God's perspective. 
It's also about our passions. So what are our passions and our emotion. So I've done some presentations on emotion. It's very important that we express our passions and that we live our passions and that we share our passions and our personality and nature and that we are emotional and we are connected to our emotion and feel how we actually feel and work through any feelings that we have that are disharmony with God's love and God's truth. So it's about our attitudes and intentions and thoughts. Now thoughts are a, a I've, thoughts I feel are generated by soul feel, based feelings and the actions we take are also generated by the feelings and beliefs that we have in our soul. So, and also about from our desires. So our thoughts and actions are like that. Our intentions though, are what we intend to do, you know. So sometimes we may take an action that we may intend to harm someone, but we might take actions that seem like they're being kind to somebody, but actually our intention is to be unkind. So sometimes our actions don't always match up with what our intentions are or our motivations, as you could also say. If we're going to be self-responsible, it is our sincere desire to an aspiration to become self-responsible that God is measuring. And if you're working towards that, then you're more in harmony with God's laws. So a lot of good things are going to happen in your life. There's very few people who are self-responsible in, in every area of their life. Some people have take more physical responsibility than others. Some people take more um, emotional responsibility than others. Some people may be more sexually responsible and moral than others. And some people may be more spiritually. Uh, though in saying that, I haven't met many people who... I feel like we are very injured in self-responsibility and sometimes uh, so they can play out in different ways such as like as a child that's where we first learn about being responsible or not being responsible so as a child you may have been taught that you have to be responsible for everyone in your family you need to be responsible for your parents and for the other children in your family and you were basically given more responsibility than maybe you were even ready for when you were tight like a little child so there are families who, you know, sometimes they may have, I've heard of families who have alcoholic parents and the children have to take a lot of responsibility very, very rapidly, both for themselves, for their parents, for the other children in their, if they're there, for their physical needs. They might not be taking emotional responsibility, but they've got to be more responsible than the adults often, often are in the environment under those situations. There's other times where parents don't want to be responsible in an area and they force children to be self-responsible and so you can maybe come to a point where you take more like you feel that you're responsible for everything and that others aren't responsible for, for things and so you start taking responsibility for the emotional needs of your parents for instance or you take responsibility for the physical needs and welfare of your siblings because your parents aren't doing that or you might do a lot of all of those different things all all at once. Now, that is not a, a true self-responsibility. Though you learn by default, you will learn to be a more self-responsible person because you are doing all these things for others. It's also not loving on the parents' part because they are you are being forced into being responsible for more than just yourself. And also you're being forced to be responsible for everyone else in the environment when because others don't want to. And that's what happens when you don't want to be self-responsible. So in this example, if the parent isn't wanting to be self-responsible and the child is made to be responsible from an early age, that's like an expectation and demand upon the child that they have to now be self-responsible. That's not based on love and that's not a loving place to be. That's The adults aren't being self-responsible. And so in this example, the child is taking responsibility even when others in the environment need to take responsibility for themselves. So that can be one, one injury and if that's what, what has happened in your life, then you need to look at, well, hold on, what do I now, you know, as we grow older into adults, if we continue to do that and we're taking responsibility for others when actually they need to take responsibility for themselves, then we need to start looking at, well, hold on, am I speaking up, am I pointing this out, am I, you know, am I overly responsible here? And I don't feel like there is an overly responsible it's more that there's, it's out of harmony with love if someone is making you, you know, having a demand that you're responsible for them 
And if one person's not self-responsible, then automatically they're making someone else be responsible for the areas they don't want to be responsible in. So that brings me to the fact that you may not take responsibility at all for yourself. That's the flip side. So you might be responsible for everything in a family or you might take zero responsibility. So let's use a different example. You're in a partner relationship and you have kids and you're the man in the relationship and you feel that the woman's job is to look after the kids. So you take no responsibility for the kids. If anything goes wrong, it's her problem. If anything, if she does anything, um, if the kids do anything, that's her fault. She needs to deal with them. She's in charge of it. She should do it. Or sometimes it might be that the mum doesn't want to take any responsibility for for doing any outside work or creating the income in the family or making those things happen. Or it might be that one partner in the partnership wants to only do the things they like doing and then the other partner by default has to pick up all the other places. So one party might not like doing the accounts and the books and managing the money or want anything to do with the kids and they do nothing of that but they like going out and you know, going to work and seeing their mates and whatever it is. So they do all that part and all the bits they enjoy. And then the other partner has to pick up the pieces in order that the family runs or that, you know, you have enough food for the kids and that you can pay the bills and that you can pay the school fees or whatever it is. You can get clothes and basic needs met. You may have in a relationship as well where you don't take responsibility of that you believe, um, so let's do another one, where as a woman you feel that the man should take responsibility for all the the discipline in the family and that you shouldn't have to deal with that, even though you might be really upset and angry. So you might just be like, no, I'm I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm the good parent. They can be the one who actually disciplines or takes the actions to, to deal with that in the family. And there's all of these different areas that, you know, you may not be self-responsible. You also may have grown up where your mum did everything for you or your dad did everything for you. And this can happen in different areas. So let's take an example where mum does all of the physical things in the family. So she cooks and she cleans and she does all the washing for you. So as a child, you never learn how to cook. You don't learn how to clean or wash your own clothes. You've got, you know, basically everything's done for you. Dad supplies all of the money and the funds or both mum and dad might work and they both supply funds so you never have to work as well. So what do you grow up as? You don't have to take responsibility for any of your physical needs, not you know financially, or and these are all areas physically that you need to take responsibility for or learn how to, is your physical needs, so how to cook and how to clean and feed yourself, you know, how to feed yourself, how to cook, how to clean, how to clean up yourself, like your environment, how to clean, you know, your, their food, the area around your house, so like do yard maintenance and um, make sure that the you know environment is all clean and tidy. Do your washing, self care as well, like even cleaning your own clothes and making sure that your basic level of hygiene is is done. Now, if that's all done for you as a child, and also financially, you need to be able to know how to get a job or make money. Um, you know, set up your own business manage your funds so how do you do the accounting each month like what's involved in that what about tax how does that work all of these things if you don't know about those and you don't get an education if your parents do all of those things for you you may not have learned them and it might be the first time when you leave home that you're confronted with it or maybe you don't leave home like some people don't leave home till they're 40 or older like sometimes they never leave home but in in those situations sometimes there's different dynamics like sometimes the child supporting the parents Sometimes the parents are supporting the child, sometimes it's a combination of both. So that brings me to the other part of responsibility. We've got one where, you know, you're made totally responsible for everything. And sometimes that can happen also in a partner relationship. We used how children are made overly responsible, but sometimes it might be that get pregnant, you have kids, and one parent doesn't want to stick around and look after the kids. That could be the mum or the dad, and they leave. And so you're left with the responsibility of the children in your care, completely responsible. And one parent takes zero responsibility in any area. And they're not made responsible either. So that means that you are taking responsibility there. So you could be made overly responsible as a child or be take the responsibility for others as an adult. 
You could also then have the opposite, which is that you take responsibility for nothing and you expect everyone else in the world to be responsible for you and make your life smooth and easy for you and look after you. It's another option. Often there's a combination where sometimes you take responsibility in certain areas for certain parts or certain things and you're comfortable with doing that and some areas you want someone else to be responsible for, for those. Often that send up, sets up a codependent relationship and I know when I um, first met my ex-husband we thought that we worked so well together when we first met because he did a whole lot of things and I did a whole lot of things and they sort of, I picked up the pieces that he didn't like, he picked up the pieces I didn't like or not necessarily didn't like sometimes, some of them were definitely <laughs> didn't like, some of them were he had skills in areas that I didn't have skills and I had skills in areas that he didn't have skills. So we were like, oh, well, together we make like a complete person. But that's not the point. Like God wants us to be a self-aware, what is it, the thing? Um, wants us to basically, God wants each of us, like has a law-based requirement of self-awareness. That means each of us needs to be completely self-responsible. It doesn't and. Say if we look at it that way, so we, we'd worked through all the issues that we have that are out of harmony with love and we were a truly self-responsible person, we would be truly self-responsible. Now say both partners in a relationship were fully self-responsible for themselves emotionally, physically, sexually, um, spiritually, and they were completely self-responsible, both parties. Then you'd come into a relationship, both of you would be able to do all parts of the physical things, they'd all be able to take care of your, you know, your house and the environment and the outside areas and maintain everything, you'd do accounts, all those kind of things. You'd both be responsible for your own relationship with God as well and um, spiritually seeking and growing and finding out truth and not dependent on anyone else for that. You would be responsible for your emotional health and well-being and you'd be feeling your emotions and not taking them out on your partner you'd be you know you'd, you'd work through anything that was out of harmony with love and seeking for God's truth you'd sexually be responsible so you wouldn't be demanding sexually from your partner you'd have dealt with the issues inside of yourself that were out of harmony with love and from a sexual about your sexuality and, and everything you'd be with your soulmate if you were really self-responsible or seeking for your soulmate because you wouldn't want to harm or damage another one or you'd may um, be you'd be moral in the relationship you're in because um, you may not have found your soulmate yet and if you're self-responsible that would be something you'd be working through and if you're self-responsible you're not just going to abandon a relationship and go into another one another one, another one if you're in a relationship you'd self-responsible you'd work through everything until you came to a point where you realize well no we're not soulmates and then you'd probably amicably part, part and be good friends regardless of what that you weren't soulmates or not but you'd be self-responsible about it and you'd take responsibility. So if both parties were doing that, you may decide that each of you take on certain parts of the household chores depending on what's happening. One of you might have, be working sometimes so the other one does everything around the house, for instance, and then the other one might go and work for time and the other one does it. You'd work as a team and together if you were completely self-responsible, but there wouldn't be the expectation or the demand or the feeling that someone else had to do something for you or that you had that if they didn't you're angry or upset that they didn't you would just get on and do it and because both parties would be working together to just get on and do it there would be less like less re really less work to do less problems less fuss everything would be smoother and that's what it's like when people are self-responsible because you don't have to worry anymore that things aren't getting done you don't have to follow up on people you don't need to manage them as much. They don't need micromanaging. Their things are done more smoothly. You work, work more cooperatively together. You just make sure that things are done. And you also both are educated and understand and know certain, like how things are done. You are more in harmony then and can, and when we're in harmony and cooperative, whether that's in a partnership, a, a employment situation or relationship, with children and adults, as a family situation, in a government situation, a business situation, anytime we're more cooperative and working together and for a common goal, say towards love and truth, wow, so much can happen. It can be such a wonderful experience and enjoyable and fun and there's no demand and expectation. So 
you know, things are smoother and yeah, just, just better under all circumstances. When that's not the case, then things are out of harmony with love and truth. And then there's demands and there's expectations and there's holes in you leaving people to pick up after you. All of those are not, are not loving. So self-responsibility is a loving place to be. And it's something that we're required to become self-responsible as we, as we grow up. So we could say that if you're not self-responsible, you're not yet growing up. <laughs> and there's a lot of non-self-responsible people there. What I notice in the generation coming through, so um, our kids' generation, is that uh, there's some, some more responsible than others, but there's a tendency now for a lot of entitlement and a lot of feelings that, uh, particularly in the Western world, and I'm, I live in Australia and I'm noticing that the kids uh, in like very young kids to teenagers and even to 20s and 30s, a lot of kids, like they don't want to be responsible for their entire life and their entire well-being and everything. They don't want to be emotionally responsible. They want to blame others. And if anything goes wrong in their life, it's definitely someone else's fault. They don't want to actually feel how they really feel about things. There is a lot of feelings of physically not wanting to be responsible. They don't really want to work. They don't like hard work. They don't enjoy hard work. They think that someone should just give them easy money or they want to get easy money. And, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of share market stuff or trying to have quick, quick fixes to get quick money. But then they spend it as fast as they get it. So then they need more. There's a demand for more. There's a demand that others should pick up after them, that they can treat others unethically and immorally in, say, business dealings or transactions or even, you know, for small kids. It's not, small kids are different to, to when, when we get older and are making choices for ourselves. Little kids are just reflecting their environment. And as parents, we're creating this entitled attitude. We're creating children to treat each other badly and ourselves badly. And we're creating an, a work ethic that is not good in our, in, our, in our society with others because we've done everything for the kids. To understand why we've done everything for children is a personal endeavor that each of us will need to go through. In our family, I know that I wanted to be a good mum. I felt like being a good mum meant that I did everything for the children. I also sometimes just was impatient and I didn't want to teach the children, so I didn't want to actually uh, take responsibility for my role as their parent and educate them. And I wanted to just get it done fast because I didn't want to feel the feelings of it being slow and it not getting done and it not being done properly and the effort that it took to educate the children to do things. I sometimes just wanted them to get it like real quick, smart and have it done. I wanted to avoid sometimes projections or anger. I wanted to, there's, there's so many different reasons for each of us of why we, will, we set up these dynamics with children, the entitlement dynamic is what I'm specifically talking about. There's a lot of different reasons of why we do that and why we want to take away responsibility from others. When we do that, we're out of harmony with love now as a parent. And I've, over the last two years, been conducting an experiment of actually making the children self-responsible, at least physically. I'm still working on the emotional area, the children becoming more self-responsible in that area, but there's still areas where I'm like nursing them or emotionally filling in gaps for them. And a lot of that now I'm discovering is about my lack of desire to feel certain emotions that I have of speaking up about how I'm being treated unlovingly, of actually speaking up and saying, no, you're not doing it right, or in the sense of you're not doing it in the most loving way or the best to your ability, or just having to have the conflict. There's, there's, there's many feelings now that I'm finding that have caused me to emotionally nurse or mummy, you know, mum, mummy, and I don't just do this with the kids, I do this with other people in my life as well. I fill in the gaps, I make it easier for them, which actually takes away their responsibility and takes away their growth and their development rather than teaching people so that everyone's working together and cooperatively. I've been fostering a dependency and there's reasons why parents want to remain, their children to remain dependent on them. We get certain feelings and emotions out of that and addictions met, very damaging to the children emotionally and setting up very unloving dynamics with the family and also to the children. But it is something that often one or both parents do in a family and we need to, to stop this. 
I was speaking to our children about, you know, self-responsibility and how they felt before and in comparison to now. And they were saying, like, physically, they're like, <laughs> one of our sons said, ah, oh, mum, I hated it. I hated it. I hated your experiment. I hated it. I hated everything about it, except that at least now I can cook, I can clean, and I can look after myself. And, and he said, I, I really like that. And he said, you know, I, I like cook and he really enjoys now like experimenting with it. He's got a, he's still quite limited <laughs> in his food choices, but he's, he can make his own food and he loves doing that and he likes having the choice to do it. Um, another one of our children just said, oh, I just feel like there's so much more freedom now, mum. Like before it felt like I had to do what you wanted. And it's like I had to, the way, when he was saying it, sort of I got this feeling of like, it's almost like he, he just didn't have a choice. It was like he felt sort of compelled to to do the thing that I wanted him to do. Whereas he was saying, well, now he has the freedom to make his own choices and his own decisions. And he doesn't feel restricted by me as like, you know, he said, mom, it just used to feel so restricted by you because I couldn't do it. Now I can decide what I want to do and how I want to do it. And I feel like I've got more possibilities. I feel like I can do more things. Uh, They are also aware there's areas that they're not self-responsible. So uh, having a job and working or making money and um, uh, creating their own business, uh, being self-responsible in sharing and creating information or, or sharing things with others, money and finances, these areas that they're not yet self-responsible. And sometimes to different degrees and to different areas emotionally, they still um, have, they lack some self-responsibility because of some injuries caused by their dad and I. They also are not always responsible for their desires, acting on their desires, and actually creating things in the world. In the, in the you know in the world, they're working on those things. You know they're just learning at the moment. So it's just an illustration of what we as the parents have prevented them from doing. They still also their spiritual development. That's also something that they're learning about and that they're not fully self responsible for yet. Now we're talking about children. So this is going to be normal. A child comes in and they're completely not self-aware. They're not self-responsible. They have, they're clueless in their journey through to a life and adulthood and their experience on the earth are all created by God and God's laws to help them to become self-aware, to help them to um, seek truth, love, understand all the principles of love and law and the loving ownership and expression of their will, desire, passions, emotions, attitudes, intentions, thoughts and actions in harmony with principles of God's laws. God's set up a whole laws and framework for us to become self-responsible you know, in all areas of our life. That's how it's designed. So the child is, is just being educated and we as parents this is where we've got a, a big responsibility and often we're completely not owning that role responsibility. We're giving that up. We're not educating children to be self-responsible. We're educating them to be dependent. We're educating them that they are entitled. We're in educating them that parents should do sacrifice for them. We're educating them that if a parent doesn't do something, then you know, depending on the situation and the family, Sometimes we're educating that the parent takes no responsibility and the child has to be responsible for us as the parent for our whole life and look after us. And some parents set that up in families. My ex-husband didn't leave home till 40 and there was a expectation that he would look after his parents for the rest of his life. And there was a barter system that went on between them that caused that to happen in the family and they both accepted that and had a codependent relationship which thought that was a good thing. And the fact that family set it up by guilt and uh, dependency and, you know, and uh, they might withhold inheritance from, from the younger generation and the younger generation is waiting for their parents to die when they get to a certain age so they can do what they want because the parent is trying to basically manipulate the child to look after them because the parent's not taking full self-responsibility. Neither is the child because they would actually go out and make their own business and make their own money and have a farm, say if we're talking about farms, their own farm if that's what they really truly desired to do. My point is that we're not being very self-responsible in many areas. Um, Often neither the parents nor the children are responsible emotionally for their emotions and 
often parents want the children to be responsible for them emotionally and they're blaming the child for all of the problems that are happening in the family. You know, the children are reflecting behavioural issues and parents don't take responsibility for their own emotions and the creation of what the children are reflecting or what, you know, is created in the child. And that is a very unloving thing to do to, to the children in our care. So there's a lot of a lack of responsibility in the world. If God's our real parent, God's trying to educate us through every means possible. And we are sometimes like, well, we are petulant children. <laughs> We're all in rebellion and saying, no, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But God's not going to take responsibility where God's not responsible for it. So all of the pain and suffering we create, that's our responsibility to fix it. And it would be unloving for God to step in and fix it just as we need to allow children to have their own experience and to actually have the consequences and feel the results of the actions they take from an early, early age so that they become aware of what is loving and unloving. And that we need to take the role as teacher of the children. We're the first teacher in a child's life, the parent is, and what you model and what you demonstrate and what your soul is expressing and demonstrating and modeling to that child is what the child is going to pick up on and act upon, or maybe as they get older, disagree and rebel against. It is our responsibility to help children to become self-responsibility beings. And when I say that, they can be self-responsible by the age of like very young, like four or five, five or six, you know, very, very young age. We are off, children are often dependent well into their, well, man, I was dependent emotionally on my mum into my 30s. Oh, I'd be ringing her up and asking for advice and wanting her help. And there's a codependent relationship between us at that time. Now, gosh, I just think, gosh, that's the work. Oh, I'd hate to do that now. I'd feel terrible. At the time, that's, I, didn't, I wasn't taking responsibility for my own emotions. I wasn't taking responsibility for my own decisions. I, I didn't want to. I wanted, you know, she'd created a dependency and I wanted to be dependent on her for certain things. Same with my dad in different areas. So these are things that I think sort of discuss now a little bit of where we're at and how there's a lack of responsibility or sometimes we're taking more responsibility. So particularly I see this with emotional um, issues, like sometimes you may be very responsible physically, but in families there's often the parents want the children to be emotionally responsible for them and so they're quite needy and demanding. It can also be the opposite where the parents pretty much just like leave the children to their own devices and the children just has to sort of like look after themselves. But in the, in the area of emotional responsibility, I feel we're very stunted, for want of a better word. We are, we're very stunted and, and sort of stuck as small children even when we're growing adults. There's very few people I know who are emotionally responsible. Most of them are still blaming others or feeling that it's their parents' fault that they're now acting as they are even when they're adults. Now, when you're a child, it is your parents' fault of what's being happening in your environment. That's totally the responsibility of the parent. And if a parent doesn't want to be responsible, then either the child's going to have to be responsible or no one takes responsibility. And there's, there's on-flow effects for doing that. Another thing that sometimes happens in families is that children aren't allowed to be responsible. So like the example I was using of myself, is like I took a responsibility away from the children and so they didn't have to be responsible, particularly with the boys and because uh, of the emotions that I had going on with them. And with our daughter, I have an expectation that she should be more responsible. So now she's real angry and she's like, well, if the boys can get away with it, I'm going to get away with it. They're, these are all things that I need to correct. I've created them, so I need to correct them. And I'm now discussing this with the kids and looking at, mainly I'm looking at the reasons within myself that I have created those. So if we're going to apply principles, I'm looking at myself first. I'm feeling about the emotions and, try, and identifying the causes. And I'm very grateful that I have external feedback to help me to do that. But I'm also now uh, seeking to my own relationship with God and asking God a lot about, well, please show me and um, what is it that I'm doing here that's out of harmony with love and why have I wanted to have the dependency of the children and what do I get out of that and what in me causes them to, to feel that they can get away with not being self-responsible or 
feel that they don't have to be responsible and why am I educating them in that way and what do I get out of that because I have to get something out of that or what emotions am I trying to avoid by doing that. So there's either something feeling I'm wanting or some feeling I'm wanting to avoid. Often that seems to be the way of a bit of all about emotion of what do I want to avoid or what do I want someone else to sort of get a feeling of. And that's helping me to find out about, well, what's causing me to not have this feeling of like, no, you guys are totally capable. You need to be a self-responsibility. And then just educating them in any area that they are not educated in yet, because that's just the responsibility. One, educate yourself so you actually understand what you're educating another person with. You can't share knowledge and educate another person if you don't know yourself and you haven't had the experience. So you need to, otherwise it's just a theory and you don't have any clue yourself. So you need to get educated yourself first and you need to get educated physically, emotionally, sexually and spiritually and to take responsibility yourself for that. And then once you're self-responsibility, you'll demonstrate that to the children in your care and to everyone else around you actually. There's also a responsibility I feel that sometimes... There's areas um, in my personal uh, experience and for others where I will take responsibility for others. Sometimes they demand it, so I do it. Sometimes there's an issue in me of not wanting to speak up or say the truth. So say with children, you know, if they were educated, so you'd gone through the education process and you'd loved them and you'd taught them about being um, self-responsible and they actually were being more self-responsible, Say there was somewhere where they just didn't want to be, but they knew how to, they were educated and they could do it. And then you start, as the parent, you start filling in the gaps. You start just picking up the pieces and you don't say anything. Now I feel like there's a problem because if it's someone's educated, and this can happen with children or in your workplace or anything, if there's an expectation or demand that you should be responsible for something that they're capable of being responsible for, now there's an issue that's out of harmony with love and that needs to be addressed or rectified and and need to find out well is the more education required if not well there must be an emotional reason that that this is happening and that needs to be rectified and if you're self-responsible you would work through emotionally the reason why it's happening and you would change it so that both parties are are responsible and equally responsible. There's not more self-responsible and less self-responsible. You either are self-responsible or you're not self-responsible. I can see this happening in partnerships a lot where one party does all the things they enjoy and then the other one just picks up all the parts they don't. And this ends up happening in workplaces as well. Like people don't get educated and so they can't do certain jobs and so it falls on one person to manage or to do everything in that area. And that is a problem because one, there's only one person doing it and no one else knows how to. So what if that person gets sick or dies or has to leave for a while, then it can't even keep running you because you don't even know what to do. Uh, two, there's some uh, emotional like demands and expectations that they're going to do it and you feel like, oh, I'll well, just leave it to them. There's also, you're treating someone worse than you treat yourself. If in this example, if you're doing what the person is doing all the things that um, you like, and then the other one has to like clean up all the methods or do all the pieces. So for instance, I've observed where uh, the man in the family just goes off and does whatever they want. It's everything's at their pace, whatever the, the wife cleans, cooks, uh, does the accounts. Uh, does basically the clean up of anything to do with it, cleans up his messes as well. So when he gets in trouble with other people, when I say if he gets into trouble, she's trying to like make it okay. Now this could also be the opposite and the wife could be going around doing a whole lot of different things or the, you know, the partner and the man's picking up everything and trying to sort out all, all the different things or making excuses or, you know, trying to fill in all the gaps and, and everything. It, it doesn't really matter about the gender, just the, the example. And that's an unloving place to be as well. And after a time, if you're the one who's picking up all the pieces and doing all the things that are unenjoyable, you end up feeling sometimes resentful or, um, you know, you don't get a lot of joy out of it. And I notice a pattern, uh, like um, stereotypically, I suppose, or in the past, that has sort of been the role of the man and the wife. Like, you know, the man goes out and does, earns the money and sort of is out in the world and the woman is at home sort of making sure everything ticks over 
Now, sometimes the man's in his passions and desires and loves what he's doing. Sometimes he's not. Sometimes he's just getting by, you know, just to make enough money to run it. And neither of those places are happiness or close or connected or you're not growing towards something. Both parties are generally unhappy. There's not a lot of, I don't see a lot of good things about that situation, um, bar you kind of splitting jobs. But over time, it's not very satisfying. And maybe at the beginning it worked because of circumstance. Maybe at the beginning it, I don't know, you'd have your reasons for why you got into that situation in the first place. But it's not based on passions and desires and working towards a common goal and working together to create something. And if you were doing that, it has a different, very different feeling and motivation for, for doing things. And I think it would create a lot. You know, imagine if you're a soulmate couple or even if you're just a couple of similar interests and, you know, you're together and you're working towards something together. It can be fun and exciting and inspiring, but if one's left, you know, one's out doing all the creating and all the fun parts and the other one's sort of like at home doing all the drudgery work or following up all the accounts or running all the sort of business from behind the scenes, yeah, you might, you might like it, but I haven't met... I haven't met too many people who love it and feel really fulfilled and satisfied. <laughs> Not over a long period of time. I feel like you could change it up and both be self-responsible and both work towards things and both create together and then both do all the behind the scenes things as well, which would make a lot of, I don't know, a lot of sense to me. And in saying that, if we're talking sort of about, a bit about gender here as well, you know, there's different qualities in, in men and women as well. And sometimes there's different aspects of a project that the genders might do, but you'd work together to create it. So, you know, I don't know, maybe you build a house and, well, I don't know, both parties might love building in the actual construction part of it, but maybe not. Maybe that, you know, one party likes the construction part better and the other one likes making it all beautiful and pretty and doing all the furnishings and thinking of things like that. But you'd work together still and make decisions about what you do, not just leave it to one or the other, but you create that together. And I feel like that's a lovely, a lovely thing to do. So we've established that being self-responsible is a law-based requirement that God has, has set up, so each of us have, which means it's a loving thing to do. I feel if, we, if you look at the four basic qualities to develop, so love, truth, faith, humility, if you develop those and um, work to become more humble, more faith in the process, desire to love God, yourself, soulmate, others and the environment. If you have a desire for truth, both God's truth and you're seeking for truth or absolute truth, universal truth, God's truth on a matter. And you're also seeking to understand the truth of what's happened to you, whether it's that's in harmony or disharmony with God's truth. And, and that's the truth about how you feel and what you think those qualities can help you to become self-responsible. Self-responsibility is a principle of God's truth. It comes across every area of your life. You know, are you, if you're being self-responsible, you're going to be more in harmony with love. If you're not self-responsible, then you're not. If you're, you know, not going to be in harmony with love. If you are love and truth. If you are out of harmony with love and truth, then your life is going to, you know, you're going to get the compensation of that because you're in, out of harmony with God's laws. So there's going to be penalties against you for doing so. When you're in harmony with God's laws, then there's rewards that come and less correction needs to happen. So the question was, how do I assess my level of responsibility towards a person? I feel if you base on what love would do, we've talked about some of the injured ways that we take responsibility or don't take responsibility and how we have demands on others if we're not taking self-responsibility. And every time we don't take self-responsibility, then we have demands. What's the level of responsibility you take? Well, obviously when a child, we're talking about parenting here, so when a child is a tiny baby, they can't yet take responsibility for themselves. And so you as the parent are responsible for taking care of their physical needs and also, you are responsible for educating them and teaching them things. And, but you'd want to be helping them and to educate them as fast as possible to be self-responsible in all areas of their life. And that means that if you're not self-responsible in an area, then how can they be? Because you're modelling to them that they don't need to be either. Or you're 
demanding that they fill in that gap and be responsible for something you're not prepared to be responsible for, which means that then you're out of harmony with ethics, you're being hypocritical and you're being unloving as well. Really, as a parent, you need to deal with your own self-responsibility first and then set up everything you can in your home and in your life that children become self-responsibility, self-responsible as fast as possible. By the time a child is like five or six, they can be completely self-responsible and not need you at all. And that means including running their own business and making money. And there's examples of this in the world where young children have actually got their own business and are running it. Sometimes their parents are behind that, but sometimes it comes off their own back and they're doing it out of, of their own desire and passions. It is possible. It's up to you as a parent of how self-responsible you are and how you then, what emotions you have that would cause a child to be dependent on you. And dependency is not a good thing. It, it isn't. You imagine if you've got an infant and then they're 40 and they're still like an infant, you'd be really worried about them. You don't, you don't, you don't want that. That's not good. You know, we want them to grow up. The problem is, is that as parents, we often have these unhealed emotions in ourselves from when we were um, little kids and or from different things that have happened to us in our past. And when we don't deal with those, then we want someone to fill the gaps because really we just aren't being humble to feeling certain emotions. If you're not healing to certain emotions, then you're going to want someone to be dependent on you because it makes you feel good or you get something out of that. And like the kid said, it restricts them. It causes them not to feel freedom. It causes them not to have a choice. It causes them not to be able to make their own decisions without worrying about mummy. It gives, or mummy or daddy, it gives them a role. And that's an unloving thing to do to a child. So as parents, we need to become self-responsible and teach the children in our care to be self-responsible. There were some other things in this question um, about just wondering how responsible for, for others they should be as an adult. I feel if you base it on love and if, you're be, if there's a demand that you be responsible for someone else, if there's an expectation that you be responsible for someone else, then you'd want to lovingly address that with the other person and say, look, you know, you're making me responsible for something that isn't mine. You know, you, you're quite capable and quite, like if, they're, if someone's educated or whatever, you could educate them if they, if they aren't. And then if they still, still don't want to do it, then you need to have a big chat with them about, well, you've been educated and now you still don't want to take responsibility. There's an issue of love here, you know, and this isn't good for you and it's not good for me and I'm not going to support you in that, you know, if we're, if we're talking about other adults here specifically. You know, you need to take responsibility. And even teenagers and even like yeah, children who are a little bit older, this is the same thing that you do. If they're demanding, you know, they're sitting down waiting for dinner every night and you're the one who's expected to do it, well, hold on. One, I'd be like, hold on, are you educated? No. So then I'd teach them how to cook. I'd teach them about healthy choices. I'd teach them about health and how food affects the body and what kinds of foods are healthy foods and you know you can do a whole lovely little education program and then they can start experimenting with cooking and once they've found recipes they like then you could even have it where you put in orders and you say I'd oh, look I'd like this for dinner you know and if you're working all day and your child comes home early or something or you know then they could make you dinner or you know you could have it that there's a roster in the family where each person has different day that they're making dinner or sometimes you might have nights where you all make dinner together or however you want to arrange it. You could do mix it up a lot so that sometimes they're individually so you know that they're educated enough that one child can do everything for themselves and for a family and for a group of people because it's one thing to make a meal for yourself and that's being self-responsible. Then there's another thing in a family of making a meal for more than one person and that teaches a lot of good skills to children of quantities of how if they've got to go and actually buy the food themselves they need to know like about budgeting and fun and funds and how much it costs about quantities how much different people eat how much they need to make if they're making it for a group of two or a group of five or a group of ten or what if you have a party and you have 50 people you want to make sure there's enough food for everybody and there's enough drinks and everything's like nicely set out and these are things that you can do as an, um, an education process in the family and they're fun to do. And, you know, children, let children make mistakes. So start small and they might make it for five and there might not be enough 
food for dinner, you know, and then the child learns. And it's like, oh, there wasn't enough. You know, they learn via their own experience. And these are things I think that are wonderful opportunities for children to learn and to, to do in a family. Now, once they're educated, if the child's still sitting there waiting for their dinner, then you need to have a bit of a chat to them and be like, well, you know how to make food. You know you can get your food. You know where it is. You can even do the shopping. So you could, you know, ring the neighbour or arrange a ride to go and get the food or you could go down to the supermarket, depending where you live. Or you could grow your own garden and that would be another self-responsible thing to do because often we're not self-responsibility, self-responsible in um, the production of our own food. We're reliant on supermarkets or other people to do that. In fact, if the world went kaput, you know, and there was nothing or there's been, you know, the virus happening <laughs> lately and supermarkets are cleared out because everyone's panic buying, it is responsible to have food in your garden. You know, at least you'd be able to survive for a little bit longer than if you have nothing and nothing's in the supermarket anymore. So teaching, you know, learning yourself how to grow a garden and then teaching children how to grow a garden and grow their own food and then they can harvest their own food and make their own food and then create that for the family, that would be a very loving provision to do and something that it's worth learning how to grow things. Sprouts and sprouting seeds is something you can do no matter where you are. You're also planting seeds and growing things. You can do them in window pots or little pot plants or having children have that experience of how to grow something and actually, particularly food plants, I think is setting them up for a good stead for the future. So we're off on a bit of a tangent there. If they're sitting there waiting for dinner and, and they know how to cook and they know how to har they've got a garden and they've harvested and you know they can do all of that, then you'd need to just talk to them and say, well, now there's an expectation that I'm making a dinner for you, you know. Or you could just not make the dinner at all and then, <laughs> you know, sit down, have your own dinner and see what happens when you don't make it. And that would bring up some emotions for you, I'm sure, and also for the child. And then you can work emotionally through that and come to a more loving place in it. That's something that I would have a discussion with, it, with someone about. And whether that's a child or your partner or if you've got flatmates, and you're the one who ends up, say, the one who's always cooking and cleaning, now you're taking responsibility where everyone should be taking responsibility. And it's different if you've got an arrangement or, you know, and they're quite capable to, but they're, say, working and you're the one who's looking after the house, maybe that's an arrangement you have. But if it's not an arrangement and you're all living together and it's just that it falls on you too and there's an expectation or demand to, now you need to address that issue with whoever's in the environment. And firstly feel about it yourself that would be the emotionally like self-responsible thing to do would be to emotionally work through the reasons why you keep doing it why you don't want to talk up speak up why you're continuing to even do the action you know like what is it that's really going on and then once you do that then speak with the other parties about it and sort out the issue and raise raise the problem and and work through it that would be one suggestion another one was am i Am I treating someone like a child if I feel like I should be available when they need help? This isn't a very specific question, and so I'm going to answer it generally so that it can apply to many people. I would look at my motivations and intentions, and I would also look at the motivations and intentions of the other person. So if my motivations and intentions are to be available to help because that makes me feel needed, it makes me feel like I've got a role, it makes me feel important, it makes me feel like they need me and I need to drop everything and be available for them. Oh, that's got some things that are out of harmony with love and I'd need to look at, well, like, hold on, that's not, not very good. If my intention comes from, no, I want to love and depending, obviously it depends who it is and it's someone who doesn't know something or whatever, then you can make yourself available at a convenient time. It's not like drop everything and do it for them but be available to help someone to educate them. You know, so say you're a manager in a workplace and you have someone new come in and they don't know what to do. And yeah, you might need to be available for a period of time while that person is educated in the procedures and the ways of doing things in the organisation and so that they come to know and understand how to, to do the job that they have been employed to do. And yes, you'd need to make yourself available for that. If you feel like you have to be available and you're, you know, like if you're not, then terrible things are going to happen. Well, now there's an emotional issue and, and something's going on. If you feel you have to be available but you don't want to be, 
well, now there's another issue in you that's out of harmony with life. You need to feel about all these things. So I'd base it on principles. I'd look at love and truth. Is, is this a loving action I'm taking for all parties involved? What's a real dynamic going on here? What are my motivations for feeling like I need to be available all the time? What are my emotions or what are my motivations for feeling like I need to be available all the time? Are they from a place of love or is that out of harmony with love? Am I being fully self-responsible? Am I taking too much responsibility? What, what is that for me? And I would look at that because it's going to be unique or specific for different people and different people are going to have different interactions. Some people take are overly responsible and then take responsibility where others could, are quite capable of doing so. And some people don't want to take responsibility at all. And then that forces someone else into being responsible in that area. Part of this question also said, what about children with no parents and about responsibility? Now, this, this is a, this, I think this is a good discussion point. Depends if you're talking about on earth or in the spirit world. Often parents don't want to take responsibility for their children in both. So abortion, for example, is an, a result of parents not wanting to be self-responsible and actually responsible for the decisions that they made. And a child, you know, was conceived and when they're aborted, which is actually a murder of a child and taking a child's life, then that child is then, you know, the earth parent isn't taking responsibility for that child and that child is then goes to a place and there's um, people who love and they do take responsibility for those children and help them to grow and to educate them and to develop in the spirit world. And that's a very hard process for the children and it's a lot of work and time and effort and because of the love that the helpers have towards the child and because they just have a desire to love, they, they do that job. The earth parent doesn't understand and pretty much is clueless about how much they have abdicated their responsibility in many, many areas, actually. Now, children on earth with no parents, again, someone didn't want to take responsibility for them at the time, did they? So if you loved, well, for me, I'd, I feel, yeah, you, if you had the opportunity to, you would want to help, you know, to, to take responsibility for them. But if you were self-responsible, Again, you would educate that child to be as self-responsible as fast as possible on their own and you'd teach them about love and you'd teach them about able to have a relationship with God and about God's laws and all of those things so that they actually could be self-responsible on their own. I mean, those, those examples sort of highlight that when we don't want to take responsibility and I'm talking, say, if a child is very, very young and they can't be responsible for themselves, then, yeah, forces someone else into a position of taking responsibility and in our world, I don't feel they're very loving or sometimes they're not even very well set up or run. In a way, I think people feel quite helpless and not sure how to deal with them. But we have social services and governments have set up agencies that take responsibility for children who parents don't want to take responsibility for. Sadly, the way a lot of those institutions are set up or you know, the way that the, they're organised isn't necessarily in harmony with love and truth. And I think there's a, the amount, it's like a whole nother discussion, but there's a lot of different problems that can happen in those areas. And sometimes it's even supporting the parents in remaining irresponsible um, with the way that, that things are done. At other times, I feel like the services are a godsend for some kids to remove them from irresponsible parents. Who, who don't have, want to love their children and who don't have the best interests of the child at heart. And that can be a blessing for them, but it does put a strain on those organisations. Now, if we all loved and we all really, really, truly loved, I do feel that we could easily um, change all of those things. And, and even in homes where you might not be, say, removed or it might not be that drastic, sometimes kids you know, might not want to stay with their parents. And if we had a different way of, of viewing family and a different way, like we weren't so basically controlled or enmeshed or feeling like family is the be all and end all of things, we'd probably give, there'd be the opportunity that children could make more cho like better choices. And if they didn't want to be with their parents, that they could go live somewhere else or 
you know, you could make arrangements that they could go and live with someone who they did want to live with or that they could live on their own somehow, you know. And I think that there's a lot of creative ways that if we taught self-responsibility to children when they were very young, that they could become self-responsible very quickly. Like imagine, for instance, sometimes I'm, I do these imagining exercises and I imagine what it would be like to have fully self-responsible child from a very early age. So imagine if they were taught the basic, how to meet their basic needs. So how to grow food, how to prepare and make tasty, tasty, yummy food as well for themselves and for others. If they were taught how to build so they could actually make their own home or their own structure and actually look after their own physical needs. If they knew how to um, water worked and how to harvest water and in order that they could collect water so they actually could create their own home and they understood all of the basically how to meet their basic needs so that of, of survival. Then you also taught them about that it's possible to have a relationship with God and that they have a direct connection via the constant conscience, that they can receive feelings and information from God, that God's their true parent, that God's laws and how God's laws work and it's a framework for, for, the, for them that they are working through. And they, if they were then emotionally taught to be emotionally self-responsible, that they can cope with their own emotion, that emotion is just a normal everyday part of life, that emotion is the key to connecting with their relationship with God and feeling God, that emotion is the way for them to be happy. If they didn't have any sexual injuries from their parents and their environment and they then came to know them, their own personality, their own nature and had a desire for their own soul and their soul made and to know them and they had that, then they'd have like a best friend to work through and they'd also have a best friend to in their life which they could explore and discover the world with as well and they could also then have the beginnings of a, a really beautiful friendship and a relationship and then as they grew they may also then discover their sexuality in a loving in a loving manner rather than the such damaged manner that often sexuality is discovered in our world today and even the beliefs you just imagine like that and that could all happen, you know, and they're financially self-responsible, so they have their own business and, and they know how to look after their accounts and they know how money is governed. Or maybe they have like a gifting system where they go do certain work for other people and then, I don't know, other people might just appreciate it so much that they give them funds or they might give them food in exchange for their work. There's lots of different possibilities. I just sometimes imagine that and imagine like that if that's possible and the next, imagine the next generation is all like that. They'd just be taking responsibility. They'd have their own shelter. They'd have their own thing. They'd all be living on their own. They might not be able to drive yet. They might be too small to reach the pedals or something. But, you know, they could quickly learn how to do that. They're probably more responsible than a lot of drivers we are. They may even invent, like, new ways of transportation or something to get places. You could just drive them somewhere or they could catch the bus or whatever it is. And if we didn't have... Uh, like if adults, so we being adults, if adults didn't have all of the like sort of condescending feelings towards children of children need need us as adults, that the sort of dependence sort of feelings that you know, some we didn't have all of these false beliefs about children and you know and they're how incapable they are. Children are very capable, and if you let them be, and you and particularly if you educate them in a loving way wow, children, like, they understand things far faster than we do. And, you know, some kids know more than adults do on all kinds of areas. But adults often are so arrogant that we won't even accept that fact. And, and often we don't want to because it then may, it brings up feelings for us that of our inadequacies and our lack of self-responsibility. I just imagine what it could be like. And I imagine how God has designed it. And if we were all in in a different state and what that might be like if we were really self-responsible. I also imagine it in workplaces and in a workplace environment and what that would look like. I think it would be wonderful. Like really, I'd, lo I'd love it. I think it would be absolutely fantastic. I also have things to still work through in myself in order to get to that, to that place and beliefs and everything because our children were not self-responsible with either the age of five or six, so I obviously didn't believe it at that time. Now I feel like it's more possible and I also now see the, the positive rewards that the children get from being self-responsible and how they feel about themselves, like their sense of self is much better when they can do all of these things for themselves. They feel more independent and happier and 
I just think it's it's much much better for them. They can organise themselves, and and it, it, it's really good. So I feel that at the moment in the world with how it is, yes, there's certain areas where when we are self-responsible, we will end up being responsible for others because we love and because we want to do that. We'd also speak with the people who are not being self-responsible or, you know, I suppose you could say irresponsible, and we would actually try and help to educate them in order that they could become self-responsible so that it wasn't just a, an acceptance of the demand or expectation. And I I feel there's a lot in this topic and you can sort of say, well, should I do this or should I do that or should I take this action or should I take this action or what is right or what is wrong? My suggestion is to feel about what love would do and that's going to be situation specific. So under some situations, yes, in the case of you know children who don't have parents, depending on their age, depending on the situation, depending on the circumstances, then yes, another adult may take responsibility for them, or even a you know a young person could easily take responsibility for that child under certain circumstances. There might be another circumstance where love would dictate that. Well, no, hold on, need to like actually deal. Well, we'd always deal with the parents if if possible. But say there was an orphan child, then yes, you might step in and take responsibility for that. I would say if there's just parents who don't want to be responsible and neglecting their child, so they don't have parents you'd want to deal with the parents and educate the parents and actually work with the parents. And yes, you'd also support that child and look after them because you love and you love them. And I feel that would be the loving thing to do. But your intention would be to correct the parents if they were still still alive. I feel like it's not really specific enough your, the, what you're asking me to, uh, to do. So I'm just throwing out some suggestions and some ideas and I suppose some thought thought experiments that you could experiment with yourself and ask about well what would love do and and how would God treat this situation and and also remember God's doing everything that God possibly can in under the circumstances to protect and to look after every single person every single soul on this planet and children included and it's us as humanity who are making some very unloving decisions that are causing a lot of pain and suffering in the world. I've seen certain sort of documentaries on kids in countries where they may not have parents and a lot of them sort of band together and they're not being necessarily educated in a love-based manner, but they become very self-responsible in certain areas of their life very quickly because they're forced into it. I don't necessarily feel like that's the most loving thing to do, but it does go to show that children like grow up and become self-sufficient quite rapidly. As adults, I feel like our role is to love them, is not to abuse them or to use them or to exploit children in that situation, is to actually love them and to educate them. And I feel like there's a false belief about family, that your family is sort of only your responsibility. I don't sort of feel like that anymore. I used to, but my concept of family is changing a lot. I feel like I'm an educator in any any opportunity I get with any child, any child, even children I just meet in the street, I will take that opportunity to educate them if I can. So when friends of mine come and their children are there, if they're in my home, I will educate them in how to be more self-responsible. So when the kids' friends come over, they also are expected to do their own dishes, to make their own lunches, to contribute to making food, to cleaning up and all of those things. And I feel like that's an opportunity for education. If I meet them in the street, then I'll, you know, and the opportunity arises, I'll also talk to kids about, about things and love them as though they were our kid, like in our family. I think as we work through our beliefs and our concept of family, that that would become a more normal thing to do because you won't feel like you own your children and they're just your children. It's more about taking any opportunity to educate anyone. And I feel the same with parents. Any opportunity that I have to speak with parents about what's happening, if I know their children or I don't know their children, any, any opportunity I have really to speak about love or truth or working through issues or how to become happier or Basically, I, I feel, and in my experience, God's way is the way to happiness. It is any opportunity I have to speak openly and transparently about these things I take. 
because I know how much it's benefited me and I also can see how many parents are struggling. And I feel like once we deconstruct our beliefs about family and what we expect family to be and our ideals about family and our pains about family and all of those, I don't think it will be like, again, it's an imagining. I imagine that it would be quite different the way that we'd interrelate with children and with other adults and with people in general. And again, if you have the capacity and are in a place where you love and you know more about love and truth and God's laws than someone else and there's the opportunity, then you'd educate them in that. And I feel like that's a natural result of what love does is that any opportunity to educate someone to be more self-responsible in this example, you'd take it. And that doesn't matter whether that child is your child, which none of the children are your children. None of the children are your children. They are God's children and you are just their teacher and their guardian, their sort of guardian when they're very small. And you, your only role is to educate them about, you know, God's truth and how to connect to God and have a relationship with God. If you know yourself, if you don't, you need to get educated first. Also to educate about God's laws and about how living in harmony with God's laws is going to bring a lot of rewards and, and happiness and joy and wonder and all these other lovely discoveries and living out of harmony with God's laws is going to bring pain and suffering and that those to become sensitive to that. Our role as a parent is not necessarily the world's view on what a parent is and I feel the same thing. I feel like when you love and when you live in harmony with love you're going to you know and you grow in self-responsibility you're automatically going to know what to do under all situations. Often I notice that I've asked questions and others ask questions about well, what should I do in this situation or how should it be in this situation. You can just go back to the principles. What would love do in this situation? If you don't know, then you can ask the conscience via God and find out what would what that do. And you can then measure that against ethics as well, you know, or you can experiment with it for a while and see how it works out. You also look at how you feel about the situations that are happening and what's going on. You'd also speak up with when you can see that something's out of harmony with love and someone's not taking personal responsibility in a certain area. These are all things that you'd want to do if you loved. You, you take every opportunity that is presented to you to educate about love and about truth. But you need to become educated first, else you can't educate someone else. So that's just a little bit about self-responsibility. Thank you very much for your question. I've really enjoyed uh, thinking about that and talking about it. There's so, so much more that I could say about self-responsibility. I think we'll just leave that one there for today and we'll talk more about self-responsibility in the future. If you've got any more questions about that or you have questions that have come up from watching this video, please send them in. You can contact me via aloisalh.com and there's a, a reference to that at the end of this video. Let's revisit that definition to end and summary. So self-responsibility is the law-based requirement of self-awareness to seek truth, love and understanding of all principles of love and law and the loving ownership and expression of one's will, desire, passion, emotion, attitudes, intentions, thoughts and actions in harmony with God's principles and laws. A person's level of self-responsibility is measured by God, not as the perfect embodiment of humility, expression of love or desire for truth, but by the sincere desire to attain this state. So I think that's quite a lovely thing that is God's created for us to learn about being self-responsible. And being self-responsible is a, a really satisfying and worthwhile pursuit. I suggest to look at all the areas in your life that you're not self-responsible, look at why you're not taking responsibility in them, why you don't want to be self-responsible. If you're taking responsibility in areas that you can see either your children or your partner or others in your life are not taking responsibility, why are you doing that? What do you get out of that? How do you feel about that? What are the emotions that you either get or some you may be resentful and not being expressive about? Why are you not speaking up and being truthful and transparent and upholding love if, you know, if it is out of harmony with love, if there's an expectation that you take responsibility? Or if you don't want to take responsibility, what's your demand and expectation? Does it make you feel loved if someone else does it for you? Does it, do you feel like you're entitled not to? Have you never even thought about it before? 
All of these things are possibilities and worth reflecting on in order that you can actually develop your own self-responsibility. Being self-responsible is an act of love. Being self-responsible is a principle. It's an overarching principle of everything that you do. It affects everything you do. If you create something, you need to be self-responsible for every single part of that creation. So we as parents create all of these unloving things in children. We need to be self-responsible for the fact, one, that we created them. Two, what caused us to create them in the first place? Was that because of some unhealed inherited emotions that we've got? Was it because of some feeling that we wanted to avoid? So then we created any other, and you know, we take actions that then cause the child not to take responsibility. What in us has caused this thing to happen? You know, we created it, so we need to be responsible, find the cause. We then bear the compensation of all the effects in our lives that have created that thing. Then we also, if it's an unloving creation, we are responsible for correcting that unloving creation and making it right as the best of our ability. That's an emotional soul-based process and we're, there will be very, like, need to feel the reasons about why we've done what we've done. Then also feel about the pain and suffering that we've created in, in the child by teaching them that thing that's out of harmony with love and, you know, not, not allowing them to be self-responsible. We'll have to feel all of that as well to correct it and release that and also re-educate the child if they're young enough in the order that they are, might cause conflict and the child might be very, very angry at us and have a lot of different feelings and express a lot of emotions. That's compensation for not being loving in the first place. And that is part of being self-responsible. Now you also may decide to create something really wonderful, like you may create a, a home or a structure or come up with a whole new idea or you may create like levitating vehicles or something and you know you'd need to be totally responsible for that creation understand how it works what what the ramifications are you know what the impact is on the environment on other people how it's going to be what are all of the possibilities of how other people could use it that's not your responsibility of how other people use it but you need to understand the full picture of what's happening at some point you may be able to get to a point where you can actually create creatures or create new species of plants or animals or things like that. God would need to give them life. You may be able to understand that much about something that you could create it. And you know, then you'd, be, you'd need to be responsible for all the impacts on that or the, you know, ensure that it, it would have enough, have an environment, an ecosystem that it could support it and it could survive and it wouldn't ruin or destroy anything else in that environment. And that's what love does. Love understands the entire picture, the entire scope and largeness of everything involved in that. And sometimes that blows my mind. I'm like, whoa, like, there's a lot of responsibility actually in our creations. And I think a lot of the time we just start something and we don't even think about the ramifications. We just want to do something. Like often <laughs> in buildings, for example, we don't think, we just want to get a feeling of achieving something or creating something or looking good or doing something and having something to show for what we've done. So we don't design it or plan it well. We, you know, cut corners. We use crappy materials. We don't think about the environmental effects. Like there's so many things we don't think about. And then we create something and go, look how great it is. But, you know, in 10 years it starts falling down or decaying or something starts eating it or you know and that's all because we didn't take full self-responsibility if you like and we didn't consider all our, um you know we didn't really understand love or the way the environment works or there could be all kinds of different reasons for what we do depending on what our motivation if we loved we'd consider and do a lot of planning and research and even then, you know, you may take actions and do things and then find out, oh, yeah, okay, well, that didn't work so well because, you'd say, if you'd never done it before, there's a learning process that happens as well. But if you plan and design things and you consider as many aspects of love as you possibly can and many aspects of the impacts of what you're creating and how it's going to affect people and, you know, if your intention is to be self-responsible, and remember in that um, definition it said that it's, not as the perfect embodiment of humility, expression of love or desire for truth, but the sincere desire to attain this state. So if your sincere desire is to understand like what is loving and what is truthful and how best to do things and how to do things God's way and these kind of things, which 
God's way, meaning just the best, most loving, in harmony with God's laws way of doing something. If your intention is to do that, even if you don't achieve that first go, because you might not, because you might need to learn and experiment and it might never have been done before, you would have at least considered everything to the um, to your capacity. And then you will learn things. And so the next time you do something, you'll modify and you'll create it even better. And that's part of learning. And that's what, you know, as parents, we can model and also demonstrate and help educate children in is that, let them have their experiments and their discoveries and do things so that they learn, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, this is the result of it. You know, maybe they make a little playhouse and they plumb it in or whatever and they don't plumb the sink in properly so the water goes everywhere. Oh, I didn't do the plumbing well. They might need to redesign and modify it. And this is something that is kind of, I think, would be fun to do with children and a lovely way to educate yourself and them about all kinds of practical, I'm talking about practical things here, but you could do it with spiritual things, you can do it with emotions, you can do it with all kinds of stuff. But every area of your life to be self-responsible, you can do it in. And if your focus is on seeking love and God's truth on all matters and finding out the best you know, way to do things and just seeking, 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 seeking to become self-aware and self-responsible in, in your life, then I think there's lots of wonderful possibilities that could happen. And as parents, we're in this lovely, lovely position. Remember, saying parents as using it, but God's our real parents. So as the older brother or sister or siblings of, of these children, we have this lovely privileged position to learn so much about love and to gain an education in love just by having children because they are so wonderfully reflecting everything to us that you know we can learn so much about love and about ourselves, about our injuries, and also about how to love and how to do things like God's always creating things to help us to learn more about love and truth. And parenting is one of those things. In fact, I feel like it's one of the most rapid ways to learn about love if you're humble because you're, it's soul, soul interactions. And so things are immediate and they're really fast. And so if you make a, a love-based change, then that is reflected really rapidly in the environment. And also when you don't, that's really reflect, like all your unlovingness is reflected really rapidly in your environment too. So having children is a, a huge gift, I think, and I feel pretty privileged to have been in a role of a parent and to have heard about divine truth as well so that I could actually apply those principles and experiment with them in our own family and actually see the changes over a period of time. That has been the most powerful uh, faith-building thing that I think I've done in my life, but also helped me to see so much about my own self and also about people in general, you know, and learning about who these children are who are in our care. And it is a, a wonderful opportunity. So that's a little bit about self-responsibility. Again, um, any questions, please ask. And thank you for asking the question in the first place. All the best until I see you next time.